ओम स्थापकाय धर्म से सर्वधर्म स्वरूपिणे अवतार वरिष्ठा राम कृष्णा ते नम जननीं शारदा देवी राम कृष्ण जगद्गु पाद पद्मे तयोस्वा प्रणमा मुहुर्मु नम श्री यतिराजा विवेकानंद सूरे सच्चिस्वरूपाय स्वामीने तापहारि because i did not bring my english katamrit but doesn't matter i can always uh, read and translate and sometimes straight away translate and give you only the english aspect of it okay so it was uh, in dakshineshwar taku in the company of rakhal and others rakhal ram kedar every chosen uh, disciples of taku they were all there there was one vidantwadi sadhu had come there so thakur was talking with him about brahma gyan thakur was about to get into a vehicle maybe horse carriage to go to kaligat for darshan then actually he would go via the house of adarsan there was a deputy magistrate and a very really devoted disciple of raku so naturally sometimes he goes to his place he would visit him and then uh, other also would accompany him to the temple it was saturday amavasya 29 december 1883 it was 1 o'clock in the afternoon saturdays of course are considered very sacred for mother kali so the vehicle has uh, come to take thakur then master mushay mani was also standing near the vehicle mani is asking thakur shall i go sam says why why suddenly then and uh, thakur is really asking why do you wish to go and mani says i'll use this opportunity to go to my character house once probably he was staying sometimes he would stay for a number of days at dakshineshwar and of course he had also a family wife and children and all that a large family so obviously he has to go so dako says is worried abar jabe will you go again here you are very nice besh acho you are happy here <laughs> so of course he wanted to go only for a few hours even then also dakur was really married because he had a very disturbed family his wife was about to commit suicide and all that among those lot of disagreement between masmushi's mother and his wife as it used to happen always and now also it happens so obviously but uh, masmushi because of dakur's company some of see that is why you know the when see the grace of god has its own uh, dimensions you cannot really say how it operates why some person is grace because if you see from a just a ordinary standpoint when him asmash was nothing great when he came to dakur was it must have somewhere he himself was about to end his life or something just by accident he came to dakur and got scolded very severely in the very first meeting but somehow thakur even then told him we have some spiritual characteristics so anyone if has a little spiritual tendency thakur would go out of the way to encourage and help see with uh, master chef is a long struggle because essentially he is among at a fascination for advaita but akur would again and again din into his ears as yes it's okay but you need to believe in god with form also and because he had tremendous faith and respect for thakur he was agreeing so thakur knew all about him, his family problems his difficulties everything he would come and confide to thakur and thakur would guide him also constantly and
have you muted yourself maharaj by mistake yeah. so okay. every now and then you would even come and stay stay for a few days so so you were saying that you are you are fine here why do you want to go anyway it was uh, sunday 30th december next day it was around 3 o'clock so this master master was just walking all way himself there was no one then somebody came and told that akur is calling him akur was sitting with devotees in the house then master master jawa he went and did pranam and he also sat along with the devotees because perhaps something important was being discussed takur didn't want him to miss so he sent for him to come then from calcutta ram kedar all those devotees had come so they had also brought along with him a vedanti sadhu vedanti sadhu meaning those who believe in this advaita vedanta it's what generally sadhus used to believe at least those days would all believe in that world is linear brahma darun and brahma satya jagat mitya that was the philosophy so thakur that day he had gone to ram babu's house it was a garden house a big property even now you see in kakul gachi so there he saw this sadhu for the first time he was uh, staying this sadhu was staying in a garden house bagan actually but just below a tree he was staying all by himself it was just a katiya nothing else so thakur asked ram ram chaturji to bring him once so that sadhu also expressed a desire to have thakur darshan so he came and thakur was so happy talking to him and then he was you saw in thakur's room there there are two uh, cots the bigger one and the smaller one he made that sadhu sit on the smaller cot and then uh, they were talking in hindi thakur to bhaga bhaga hindi bolte pati open hindi you speak of course bengalis i find most of them know a little hindi even those who are of the time in calcutta stood See, imagine, you know, just the same room is even there. The exterior is there. The big cot is there. The small cot is there. Actually, we can kind of relive those incidents. Actually, if you are, if you can, if you can close your eyes and imagine Thakur sitting there and this Sadhu also sitting in the small cot and conversations taking place between them. It's very actually that is a the advantage when we have a very detailed account of an avatar and the details are particularly if you see in the case of shakur they are largely at the human level although the discussions are all of a very extraordinary nature the incidents the surroundings the other things they are all very much human supposing you know even if you Read Bhagavata, some other scripture that way. There are many incidents about Sri Krishna's life also, but there is a huge amount of something miraculous, something alauki. It's very much integral part of those lores. But if you see Thakur's life and if you imagine all these, it's very easy for us to just go beyond time and leave those. Situation. It's not at all difficult because even now, closing our eyes, we can very well just feel that Thakur is sitting and talking with that sadhu. Actually, this they say it's a very wonderful way of doing sadhana. It's called lila chinta. Imagine something incidents of because it's not always possible to do intense japa, intense dhyana, etc. But other instead of wasting the time in worldly talk and useless mundane things. You can imagine some particular incident, and then simply live in that mood, in that atmosphere, in that time. It's possible. So Thakur is sitting. They're talking in Hindi. So he's asking the sadhu, 
says the that which is indicated by the sound that is there shabda is also indicative of something so that is one idea see this shabda this ahad indicates the highest brahman or the consciousness so it's what probably thakur is trying to say but sadhu says vachya vai hai vachya koi hai shabda and the object of the shabda they are all one and the same so there is a in adhyatma ramayana there is a reference vachya vachak bedhen tvameva parameshwar beyond that vachyavada bheda is that supreme reality that is the parameshwar you cannot distinguish between these two the shabda and this is that which is indicated by the shabda they are all one and the same one there is nothing to be differentiated so Thakur hearing that still there is a difference immediately goes into samadhi he got a shuddhi is in the Thakur samadhi so immediately immediately he goes to that transcendent Level. Immediately he realizes this is it. This is our supreme. Sthir, Shittarat Vitaer Nay, Bushi Ache, Sadhu Ho Bhaktara Abhak Huya, Thakurin is Samadhi Avasya Dekhite Chen. So Thakur became, he was in a transcendental state and he was absolutely motionless. Like a picture, he was sitting absolutely silent. Then the devotees and the sadhus they were stunned to see this samadhi avasya. They have not seen even. When he says, "The first time I saw what is called samadhi," we have not seen. You have not seen. So those who saw, so they were stunned. And Kedar was telling sadhu, "Hey, dekho ji, isko samadhi bolta hai." So this is called samadhi. Kedar was explaining to sadhu. Sadhu had heard of it only through the scriptures. He has read about it in the books, but he has never seen. For the first time, he saw it is a person who really has reached the state. And Dhaka slowly came back to normalcy. Then he started talking to the Divine Mother. Buddha said, "Ma, bhalo hobo, behush hoisne." साधु संगे सचिदानंद कथा खोब मा सचिदानंद कथा नहीं है विदाउटिंगलीफरने because i want to talk to this sadhu about sachidananda and i want to enjoy that be in that see even in spite of all that we might not have realized still we feel so happy to hear about such things the person who has realized all that when he hears he clearly sees that this is it so there is a greater joy his own experience his own life is being described there so there is a greater joy in that but i think i don't know whether i mentioned this in this uh, sitting in this class but i have referred to it a number of times our lord maharaj was not been educated in that sense at all thakur great difficulty tried to give akshara bhyas to him he couldn't go beyond or oh, because in bengali In Hindustan, in Hindi, he said "a ah, a." Ah. In Bangla, it is "a." Ah. Then when he wrote "a," ah, then that who says "a," ah, that is actually in Hindi. Arey tum "a ah, ke a ah, bolo," thale or er akar ke ki bolbe. So Tagore gave the idea because he couldn't make him understand the difference between the first and second letters. But that that who was always that who said that who shabd me chodi hi thake always was in a. Um, extraordinary exalted mood that was latus nature so later days when he was in kashi along with that uh, sudhir the shuddhidanand ji he went to hear a kathopanishad uh, discourse so in the pandit ji said angushta matra purushantaratma 
the nature of, of the Atman which is in the heart simply he uh, sprang from his seat so to say Sudhir Pandit Thik Vareche because it exactly tallied with his experience it got so he got so much joy so after the discourse they were coming Sudhir was going little ahead and Maharaj was following at every hundred steps Sudhir Sudhir Pandit Thik Vareche he was so excited because it exactly a person you know had never read scriptures imagine how he would feel to exactly tallies with his experience the night so 12 o'clock or 1 o'clock somebody is knocking at Sudhir's room the surprise who is knocking at night 1 o'clock he opened Dattu Maharaj is standing Sudhir Pandit Thik Vareche Pandit Thik Vareche so naturally he was so overjoyed because it exactly Tallied with his experience. So here, obviously, Raghur says, Such as Dandir Kathaniye Vilash Kurva. I really enjoy that immerse in that talk of Such as Dandir. Because it really tallies with his own realization. Sadhu was simply stunned to see Thakur and Devi was talking and he was simply listening. And then our, again Thakur is talking to them. Sadhu is telling Ab sohum udaiye do Ab ham tom vilas Arthat soham she ami udaiye do Agon ami to me So I am that Brahman Oh give that up Don't be in that highest mood of Brahma Jnana Let us come down at the level of Vaita. I mean, otherwise, how alap is possible? A person is in the state of Soham. I am that Brahman always. So, it's it's not possible. So, to talk, one has to come down. He says, see, come down. Let us talk. Amitami. I am Mai and you. Tatakun Amitami Roeche, Tatakun Mauach. Eshu Takini Ananda Koraja. So I think this is the Master Mahasri interpretation. Now and then he gives his own reading. He says, as long as there is you and me, definitely Mother is also there. When, there is, when you come down to the level of Vaita, obviously you have to accept God, you have to accept Divine Mother. So let us enjoy, let us make merry thinking about the mother and talking about her etc. Is Sakur trying to say this? Then after some time Thakur went to the Panchavati to just uh, take a stroll and then Ram, Kedar, Master, they all accompanied him. Thakur is telling Kedar Sri Ramakrishna Sadhu How did you find that Sadhu? But Keda says, Shushka Gyan, Shave Hadi Chodechi, Akono Chal Chodechi. He says, This is dry knowledge. Just now the vessel has been kept in the oven for heating, they are to pour rice, etc. Nothing, has, nothing <coughs> great has happened, it's just the beginning. Sramkrishna, Tabote, Kintu Tyagi. Sramkrishna is also not giving up. You are living in the family, you are enjoying everything. And you are saying he is a dry jnani. He says, after all, at least he has uh, given up everything. He is a tyagi, no doubt. Shamsar je tyag kura che shi anik tyagi che. If someone has really given up, Shamsar, not just mere understanding or ritualistic, in a true sense, if someone has given up Shamsar, all the involvement, Shamsar means all our worldly engagement, involvement, all that we do, where we are tied hand and feet, if one can give up, definitely it's a great step. Because, you see, ultimate, everywhere, all scriptures, Chakur, Maha, Swamiji, Gita, everywhere, they all say that this kind of Tyaga is absolutely essential for any higher knowledge or spiritual experience can be in any form. It need not be a formal taking of monastic vows. 
one can practice but wherever one is unless there is an intense effort to come out of all this unless one has really that drive towards tyaga it's not possible because see only in a pure mind it's possible for the reflection of the highest truth the mind is fully cluttered posing you have a mirror it's full of dust everything you cannot see the reflection see the reflection the mirror has to be completely cleaned and made spotless then will it is possible in the same way for the highest truths to reflect in the mind the mind has to be free from all cobwebs clutters numerous attachments which which we are bound so tyaga is so important so it i would say probably has given up definitely is progress tago says sadhu ti pravarta ke ghar ताकि लाभ ना कर ले किसी हो ना जखून तार प्रेम मत्त हुआ जाए और कच्ची भाले लगना वेरी फेमस बेंगाली सॉन्ग विल कम बिलोंग्स टू टू बिगिनर द न्यू एंट्रेंट दैट लेवल दैट इज इज टीचर नाउ बट अनलेस यू रियलाइज द अल्टीमेट अनलेस यू रियलाइज द सुप्रीम nothing would happen then when you are deeply overwhelmed by that supreme love for god when you are mad with that love when nothing else attracts you then he sings a beautiful song that we shall see later but takur elsewhere also he says there are stages pravartak Sadak, Siddha, and Siddha Siddha. You'll come again, of course, during our classes. Again, we'll get that. So he compares it. He gives a beautiful analogy. Supposing there is a room. It's dark. The owner is lying there. He's sleeping. Someone is coming in search of him. The person. who enters the room just he is the pravartak so and then sadhana is searching there is a the next step and siddha somehow he has touched the malik once siddha siddha not to really touch he has talked to him has made him sit up and all that so so in sadhana also he says pravartak is one just who has taken to spiritual life then in the next stage he does intense sadhana and then he has some realization maybe a glimpse maybe a flash but that's also not enough what is siddha siddha again and again he is completely established in that supreme state that is siddha siddha or the ultimate so how beautifully he gives the analogy pravartak means one who has entered the room that means what at least he knows where to search for them is it not that itself is a great step supposing you drop something in this room and go and search for it in some other room this is absolutely meaningless when if you search all your life you will not get it so the pravartak is a person who has entered taken the right resolve the first step that itself is a great step is come to the right place to search for the truth or for the ultimate or whatever it is so that analogy is so beautiful is come to the right place then sadhak is dark the thing is clear you keep on searching we really no don't know in spiritual life it's all initially it's all absolutely dark only because we are trying to touch or reach the beyond or the ultimate from a plane of relative or the mundane obviously it's a very difficult task how can you talk of transcendence from this level so that way the sadhana that's a period the initial stage we keep on searching 
really absolutely no clue as to what we are striving for. Here and there we have read, heard, somebody might have told, but still, absolutely there is nothing which is within our grasp. We are not able to really figure out. And then the Siddha just gets one glimpse and you know that you have got it. Beyond doubt, that was an experience. But then this soul becomes even more hungry because just a glimpse has actually triggered more hunger, more vyakulata, more intensity. And then when you finally get it again and again, beyond doubt, any number of times, then only that becomes a confirmed, we are fully established in that. Or somebody else might have heard and our uh, senior sadhus give the beautiful explanation of this, this Siddha and Siddha Siddha. <coughs> he says, supposing you have, you have an address. Where is Sadhaka? Sadhaka has an address. He's of where you should search. You are searching. And it is raining tremendously. And it is dark. You are not able to see anything. You have only a vague idea where you are going, what you are searching for. Then there is a sudden flash of lightning and you see exactly what you are searching for. That address, the house, the signs that were given. That is Siddha. It's got a glimpse. Then afterwards, it may take time to actually reach there. There may be other difficulties. There may be very difficult bridge in between. There may be dogs chasing, whatever it is. But you have got it. You know what you are searching for. There is no uncertainty in the mind. It's clear. Then with that flash of knowledge that came, you ultimately go and reach that place. So that is the Siddha Siddha, who not only sees, he talks, he, he has a exchange of conversation with him and so on and so forth. That he says to the Siddha Siddha, who is fully established in that. And, and there is no doubt in his mind about the ultimate or the truth or anything. So he says, is in the Pravartakya Ghar. It's just a, the beginning stage. Unless you get it ultimately, and unless you are mad with that love for God, and at that time you see, then nothing would appeal to you. Nothing would make you happy or nothing would give you that kind of joy. When you are in that condition, if nothing seems to attract you, you don't seem to like anything, then he says, Jatane Rudeko, Adharani Shama Make, Mon Tui Daka Amideki, Arjana Kevu, Mahideki. So then you keep uh, the mother in, uh, with great uh, care in your heart, and then, oh mine, you will see and I will see, no one else would see. That means me and my mother, totally involved, not concerned about anything else, no concern with the world, what X would say, what I would say, what's the world, what's happening, no. Me and my dear mother, so much overwhelmed by that divine love for mother, nothing else. And then of course he sang another song also. Manel kata koibo ki shoi, koite mana, Dardi Naile Pran Bachena. So he said, What shall I speak of the my mind? What shall I say? It is forbidden to speak about anything unless there is an intense feeling, it's not possible to even survive. Monir Manush Hoije Jana Urtar Nayanete. Jai Bo Chena. Maharaj, you muted yourself again accidentally. It's fine now. Uh, so again, you know, Abu says, it's very difficult to get someone of one's uh, heart of the same temperament, etc., it's not possible to share, really. That's why many of the uh, spiritual aspirants, 
much more those who have realized they become total loners because to whom to share with all them they live in a totally different world so the others would not understand what they are speaking that would make no sense to them but the other person is totally but somebody told uh, Thakur that he has become mad or something you are saying oh they are talking about they are thinking about the worldly things day and night they are alright I am thinking about God I have become mad because who would understand his language to whom would he really share obviously spiritual journey actually itself is that's what they say is a loner's journey once you get that kind of uh, deep interest then absolutely you will have no company you have to struggle all by yourself only your own God, Ishta or whatever you have understood that's the only support your own Guru or somebody who is also on a similar path otherwise it is very difficult to find a true company in this world because very few how many really take to this kind of a uh, search at all. That's why Gita says, No Manusha Nam Sasreshu Paschita Dati Siddhe Yadha Dama Bisiddha Nam Kachin Maam Veti Tat Pataha Among thousands and thousands a few take to this kind of a search. Obviously it's difficult to find someone who really have the same idea, idea attitude, mentality and so on. And Dr. has come back to his room it is 4 o'clock now the mother's temple is open. Then Tako himself is taking their sadhu. Sange kore ma kali ghare jayati. He wants to see his Vedanta sadhu. Whether he will do pranam or what. So he is anyway he is taking him. Master is also there. Then you see Tako entered mother's uh, that room and he did uh, offer his pranams and then Sadhu also, then he folded his hands and then he bent his head and then again and again he offered his pranams to mother. So I should ask him, Kemonji Darshan, how did you have? He says, Kali Pradhana hai, but he's so powerful and is all that kind of a feeling. In Sram says, Kali Brahma Abhir, Kyamunji. Again, he's really uh, poking because you know, this is something which uh, Vedantavadis will not accept at all. But, you know, they don't believe that way, you know, because they don't. Kali means his root. Kali, of course, Thakur gives a very beautiful his own explanation. If you see other Kali, perhaps the most perfect description, if at all, if you want to give shape to the highest idea of Advaita. You can see because every incongruency, inconsistency, incompatibility, everything is pictured there. So that is the nature of everything. So it's a very comprehensive picture. But Akura had his own uh, idea. Brahman or Shakti Abhed. So that Shakti he used to call as Kali. So obviously they are like the obverse and reverse of the same coin. Or Israelologists speak to the famous example like when the and the snake, when it is, is really completely coiled up, then it is Brahman and it is moving in a very, in its own way, it's peculiar movement, then it is Shakti, you would say. So Sadhu is, uh, is testing him. Kamunji, Kali Brahma Abhi, he's of course, he's a very sound person. He says, Jatakun Bahir Mo, Tatakun Kali Manta. As long as you accept the external world, then your outward tendencies, obviously you have to accept Kali. Tadakun bahirmo, tadakun balabandhu, tadakun iti priyo, iti tachyo. He says when you have this identification or participation in the external world, then obviously there is externalization and then there is good and bad, then there is this is acceptable, this is to be rejected, all that, because it's all belonging to a relative world. But at the ultimate, at the highest, if there is only one, what to reject, what to accept? There's no choice, there's nothing. Only when there is a second, there's a question of comparing, there's a question of rejecting, there's a question of accepting and all that. But there's only one, 
there's nothing so this way he says when there is a external idea by him obviously one has to accept all this otherwise nothing ei dekhun naam rup to sob mitta kintu jadakon ami bhair muke tadakon sri lok tajju ar upadesh janne pida balo uthamando nache bhrashtachar hobe You know, maybe is what the sadhu said that it's an inverted kamas. Probably it have been said. I don't know. He says, of course, nam rupa mitya because it's a it's a false identification. This nama rupa is all that is creating all the confusion in this world. Now, if you see this whole world, that which binds us, that which limits us, that. It gives us every kind of suffering or dukkha, so on related to this nama and rupa, name and form. Just imagine, even think for a few moments. Supposing you dealing this name and form from our experience, you'll be surprised. There's nothing to admire, nothing to disagree, nothing to get angry, nothing to get disappointed, nothing to get depressed, nothing to feel jealous about. Nothing will be there. Everything is related to this name and form. Everything. Tell me any example. Everywhere. So the whole world is rallying around this idea of nama and rupa. So as long as that idea is there, then all the things sadhu should be pure. He cannot compromise. All that will be there. Otherwise, he will become a brishtachari. He cannot say that. साधु यूज टू कम से जगत तीन काल में नहीं है दर्ल्ड नॉट एक्सिस्ट बट यू वॉज लीडिंग एन इमोरल लाइफ ठाकुर and sorrow and so on as long as that is there one has to accept all conditions limitations etc then tagur sadhu sange kata koi to koi to ghare phil he came to his room all the while talking to the sadhu then <coughs> sri ramesh is asking money there is master mushe dekh le sadhu kali ghare pranam kar le so tagur noticed Although as a Vedanti sadhu, as Master Musha said, yet he offered pranams there. Then Master Musha also agreed. Agga. The next day it was thirty first December evening, four o'clock. I was again was sitting with the devotees. Probably it was year end holidays or whatever it is. All those people are still there. Balra, Mani, Raka, Lato, Harish, Prabhuti, Aaj. Thakur was talking to. Mani and Balram was saying, "Tagus says, 'Haladharir gyanir bhavchi, she adhatta upanishad esa radhin porti. Yadi ke shakar ko ta ek mukh bhagati. So there was Haladhari, who was Tagus's cousin. He was there, would always talk about the highest knowledge of uh, Upanishads, etc. Adhyatma minds, all the great Advaitic texts, all that you would read, and you would really." Speak disparagingly about anything that is related to sakha, that is God with form, etc. He used to really despise and pay scant respect. Of course, he was deeply interested in uh, money and other things. That was beside the point. But at least he was. He claims to be a Vedanta Brahma Gyani, Gyani. And then, I mean, just on Kangali de Pathe. पाथे एक टेक टू खेला हम तब उन बोल ले तो चले देर बीए काम उन करे हो ऐ बोलम तबेरे शाला अमार अब अब चले पीले हो गे तो गीता विदांत पढ़ार मुखे आगू देखो ना इधर के बोल चे जगत मिच्छा अब अब विष्णु करे नाक चिप के जाएं सी ठाकुर वाज वेरी फोर्थ राइड नो यू वोट मेंस मैटर्स यू Really speak his mind out. So this Aladhari, the Sagar was in such a high state. 
he could not make any distinction between this which is what is which is uh, what is pure what is offered what is not offered because in his normal stage only cooked by very pure people he would not touch anything all those he used to observe the highest formalities but when he had gone beyond all that he was in such a state exalted state of mind he had absolutely no distinction whatsoever so there were kaligar they used to feed many beggars kangal those were nothing so he went and took a little from their plate and ate a little obviously there was no question of at that time there was no idea of caste although he was from a very high brahmin family no question of caste creed nothing nothing was he was in such a high state and sometimes deliberately also doctor used to observe some of the like that he went and cleaned rashik mathur's that uh, washrooms because to get rid of the idea of any pride related to caste he said all this ashtapas that eight bondages ek jati ek kul so many things lajja grina bhay many all those things unless they are all overcome it's not possible to reach the highest truth so either because of that or because he was in such a high state he could not make any distinction between what is prashad and what is uh, uchishta they were beggars and from their plate not that he ate a huge lot just a speck then immediately this aladari says oh you have lost your caste how will your children get married then he became furious you rascal you then right you speak a vedanta and you are talking about my children what are you saying every day and night you say world is a mitha and you are so worried about marriage and children and all that tumar vedanta mukhe phode hoko let your uh, fire upon your idea of this vedanta see that what do is so important it's very easy to talk about the highest ideas see if you are a little intelligent if you can read a few books you can give the most wonderful lectures but that doesn't matter at all in fact no that's why they often say that that is not been our tradition also the order in 125 years probably he might might have produced two or three very brilliant speakers generally the tradition is to live a great life and inspire people through the life that has been the consistent practice starting from takur direct disciples the next generation of monks even all for example even many scholars they would hardly give a talk like buddhishan ji was such a great scholar but he would very rarely he would speak they were not speakers that way so for all them the real matter was how to live a great life and in fact that is the speciality of this ramakrishna vikanda tradition even for devotees also it's very important to practice to lead a life that way otherwise any amount of reading any amount all that will not amount to anything at all so instead of reading on my read this part like aladhari reading so many things but ultimately when it comes to the brass tacks when it comes to the level of life suddenly you come down so degenerated is the idea at such a low level you speak as far as i could say is very important it is to do to practice what we preach rather than giving on go, go on giving lectures so i think we shall stop here if you have any questions we can take a few questions otherwise again i have to go for aarti and ram naam now so if you have anything you can ask me otherwise of course you can always ask next time also but right now whatever we discuss if you have anything you can ask <coughs> maharaj you mentioned about the very senior uh, swami ji in your order uh, uh, swami ji swami Sa- shantath uh, no, shantanand shantanand ji. Shantanan ji yes so he was he could hear the anahat dhani you said yeah so No, so uh, I'm sure someone would have asked him. So did he describe what it was? I mean, like. Yeah. See, um, I don't know how deep uh, discussions people had about him, but generally it is known. This Anahat Dhani is that uh, a sound is coming from deep within, from the most interior of a person's heart or something like that. So probably it is. Uh, uh, Obviously, you know, beyond a point, it's not possible to describe. Also, 
because it is not an experience that they live with the senses. So it's not a normal noise or anything, not, not a normal sound. So only those who are minds are at such a high level, they could hear that deep the sound that which is coming unstruck or by itself. It is arising from the Nabi from deep within. Okay, okay. Thank you, Maharaj. Maharaj, also, uh, this reminds me of when we put a shonko to our ears, you know, you uh, we hear that show, that sound. So, is there any, I don't, a very stupid question, is there any link between the two? Well, there is no link. Shanka is, of course, it's a good sound anyway, it's a pure sound, but Nahat uh, Dhani is something very, very, very different. Indrani has Yeah, Indrani has a Yes, Indra. Pranam Maharaj. Ah. Maharaj, during the course of this discussion, uh, this uh, idea of renunciation came up. Uh, many times, you were, uh, once or twice, you mentioned this, that uh, if we have this uh, uh, urge to rena renounce, then uh, yeah. we have progressed in spiritual life, which we know. But uh, Maharaj, I have so that brought a question to my mind, and in fact, this I have been, uh, I have had this uh, question for a long time. I will give you uh, three, two or three examples, Maharaj. See, for instance, when I'm, uh, when I'm not, uh, when I do not have ch a, a child of my own, but I am, say, I am a teacher and I'm taking care of children. I am uh, very much attached to them. I'm a concerned teacher. I'm anxious about them. Then I become a mother. Then I realize that when I have my own child, I'm extremely, my anxiety for my child when I know he's sick or something is tremendous. And then I try to imagine how would it be like for a nun who doesn't have her own children, but uh, if she were to take uh, care of a child, how is that? I, I understand that that love is even higher. But I cannot intellectually grasp it. So this is a question I have. Like, how is this uh, transition, how does this transition happen from this householder phase to this, that I want to renounce? And how is this love higher? I respect that. It's not that I, it's not a... Well, I I see the point is, no, no. See, the point is, you know, see, renunciation comes from what? understanding the true, true nature of world and its life. However much one might love one's child, neither am I going to be with a child forever, nor is a child going to be with me forever. So the, all this only brings so much of sorrow and suffering. We try to put so much, then when the child, when it grows up, it goes in its own way, we are completely broken hearted. So as our responsibility, definitely one has to do what one has to do. But beyond the point, day and night, doting over that and thinking, I have seen they, how they even they look at the children as if they will consume them. That kind of thing is no good at all. That will only bring sorrow, ultimately. One has to, because you see, from any point of view, any from any spiritual point of view, any, whether it's Dvaita, Vishadvita, any point if you discuss, you will understand that it is meaningless to have that kind of a possessive attitude towards anything. It will only bring sorrow. So one has to rationalize, one has to do vichara, understand this is the nature of life, this is so transient, so impermanent. Why should I be attached? Yes, it's, it's, a, it's even if you think, you know, it's, it's a, a one in a million chance, so and so is so and so's child. That combination, what it happens, is total mystery. Nobody knows, no one can figure out. So that be so, why should I be so bothered about that? One can do one's duty and yet feel, yes, good. Let the child grow up in its own way. Let me say what is good. It's up to the child to take it and grow in its own way. So that will save you from a lot of sorrow and suffering. Otherwise, people suffer all their life because they are attached unnecessarily. And not only really that, if the mind is uh, uh, caught in that, it will not be possible for the mind to uh, accept or appreciate anything higher or superior. Yes, Maharaj. So when, so yes, Maharaj. So when we are, uh, we we are not that much attached to one thing or one person, then our capacity for serving others becomes greater. Is that it, Maharaj? Yeah, 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 yeah. sure, sure, sure. Thank you, Maharaj. Pranam.
Namaskar. Next time we'll take up even if there are questions because I have to now go for Arti. Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Tatsat Ram Krishna Pramastha.